I will call this meeting of the Pearland Independent School District Board of Trustees to order on August 14th at 5.03 p.m. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open, Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. Let the record show that trustees Carbone, Gooden, Botkin, Floyd, and Barry, and Murphy are present. Um, our president uh, Decker is uh, out today. All right, with the call to order, we'll go directly into public comment. This is the portion of the board meeting where the board receives input from patrons. Each person who addresses the board will have five minutes to speak on his or her issue. Because of topic posting requirements of the Open Meetings Act, board members will not ask questions of the patron and will not answer any questions posed to the board by the patron. No action can be taken on any issue presented during this patron comment section of the board meeting. Patrons addressing the board will be notified when they are approaching the last 30 seconds of their allotted time to speak. All right, with that said, we have three individuals who are signed up for public comment. We'll start with Ms. Sarah May. Followed by Amber Higginbotham and John Desmond. Thank you, Ms. May. Hi, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the board members for this opportunity to speak today. I know that the board has discussed school safety at length, especially after the Santa Fe and Parkland uh, school shootings. I am, again, so grateful that as a board you have decided against arming our teachers as all the available statistics indicate that this would only increase the risk of gun violence in our schools, so I thank you for that. However, among all of the safety discussions within our district and surrounding school districts, as far as I can tell, there has been one glaring omission and that's addressing responsible firearm storage to prevent children from getting access to guns. Um, very few are talking about this at a district level. Uh, I wrote my statement yesterday. Since I wrote it, I just found out that Dallas ISD is actually doing this. Um, they're in the early stages of addressing firearm storage, so that's off script, but something to keep in mind and exciting news. Um, a recent study indicated that of all the school shootings perpetrated by students since Columbine, about 145 shootings, at least two-thirds of those students got those guns from their homes or homes of family members because those guns were unsecured. This suggests that at least two-thirds of those school shootings could have been prevented if those guns had been locked up. Clearly, access to firearms is a huge factor in school shootings. Using data from the Gun Violence Archive, which is a searchable database of all school gun-related events since 2014 when the data tracking began in Texas, Approximately 70% of those incidents involved children bringing guns to school, again, indicating that access is a problem. And with all due respect, um, again, I appreciate the safety discussions that have been ha happening and the safety measures that we see happening at our schools and on the school grounds. Many of the safety measures that are being taken, like controlling entrances and exits to the school buildings and additional fencing, won't prevent that type of incident. We need to stop these guns from getting to the school in the first place. We need to prevent children from gaining access to firearms. What I am suggesting is implementing Be Smart presentations at our schools for parents, teachers, and staff. The Be Smart organization is a part of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America and specifically addresses safe gun storage. Although Moms Demand Action is an advocacy group, the Be Smart organization is strictly apolitical. I am a Be Smart presenter and I can tell you that I do not allow, to the best of my ability, political debates during my presentations. It is about our children's safety, plain and simple, which I think most of us can agree on. I've had peop many people with many different political views on guns in my presentations, but we have always walked away in agreement when it comes to safety with greater respect for one another. The SMART in Be Smart is an acronym. Briefly, S is for secure guns in homes and vehicles, locked up and unloaded. M is to model responsible behavior around guns. Ask, or A is ask about guns in the homes of others. R is recognize the risk of teen suicide. And T is tell your peers to be smart. If you go to besmartforkids.org, there is a five minute video that covers the basics of the presentation. And I would also be um, more than happy to schedule a presentation for you as a board so that you can see what the Be Smart presentation and the Be Smart organization is all about. What I love about this presentation is that it gets people thinking and talking about responsible gun storage. It creates the necessary dialogue. It is rel relevant to everyone, whether or not they own guns. Regardless of people's political viewpoints, most people do agree on the information presented. If we're going to address gun violence, if we want to reduce gun violence, then we need to be comfortable talking about guns and what we can all do in our homes right now to help. Be Smart is a 20-minute free presentation. 
This is probably the cheapest and possibly one of the most effective safety measures that we could take. I would love to see Pearland ISD lead the way by tackling the issue of responsible firearm storage, by educating parents, teachers, and staff about the simple and common sense measures we can all take to help our kids, and by acknowledging that children having access to firearms is one of our most significant risk factors when it comes to school shootings. Um, I have a handout. Sure. Where should I leave that? Right, right here. Just right here? Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, all right, I'll that's all I have to say. And I just want to thank you again so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Amber Higginbotham. Hello, everybody. My comment today is about the Pearland ISD dress code policy, and I would like to make a comment about some of the things that it restricts children to wear to school. I understand that safety is a concern, and I researched some of the surrounding school districts such as Fort Bend ISD, Alvin ISD, Friendswood ISD, and in all of these surrounding school districts, they are asking for simple modesty and for your child to be covered in school appropriate patterns for the children to be wearing, nothing that promotes gang violence, drugs, or anything of that nature. Um, Pearland ISD stops children from grade seven through 12th grade from wearing shorts. And I feel like it's hot in the state of Texas. Every child should have the same right to wear shorts regardless of their grades. Um, I have two daughters that are sitting in the back and my little one is wearing a striped shirt. And according to Pearland ISD dress code, she's out of dress code because her shirt doesn't have a collar. I'm not aware What's the difference between the stripes on her shirt with or without a collar? It may seem silly, um, but it definitely, when I have three school-age daughters in school at this time, makes shopping a little bit difficult when you're looking at the Pearland ISD dress code and going down to make sure every article of clothing that you buy makes the checklist. Um, my oldest daughter is wearing a floral top, um, and patterns for Pearland ISD are prohibited it says solid shirts and solid bottoms, whereas the um, surrounding school districts, they don't prohibit the patterns, plaids, and things that are appropriate for school. Um, that's pretty much all of my comments. Thank you very Thank much, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Desmond. John Desmond, D-E-S-M-O-N-D. My name is John Desmond, and I have lived here at 2008 Galveston Avenue for 48 years and have really seen a big change in this country. Uh, I graduated from the California Maritime Academy, to give you a little bit of an idea, and was commissioned as a lieutenant in the United States Army and discharged as a captain. I'm here because the sign at Saboteur kind of bothers me. It says college bound. I believe the sign should be changed to career bound. And you look around, there are all kinds of craftsmen right now trying to finish up the schools. And I think it's important to recognize the trades because I remember being in a school, I paraphrase, boy do the English teachers hate that. And yet I made a very good living working with my hands. And that's all I have to say. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay. Uh, that completes public comment. All right. The Board of Trustees of the Pearland Independent School District will adjourn into closed session at 5.12 p.m. No voting will take place in closed session. Any action the board wishes to take as a result of the discussions in closed session will take place after the board reconvenes in open meeting. For the purpose of consideration for the matters for which closed sessions are authorized by Title V, Chapter 551, Texas Government Code, Sections 071 through 084, whereupon the superintendent will present for the board's consideration or discussion the following matters. And this is uh, Section 551.071, 072, 074, 076, and 082.
board will reconvene in open session at 6.31 p.m. No action was taken in closed session. Are there any motions? I make a motion. Um, I move that we accept and approve the superintendent's recommendation for employment of personnel as presented. Second. Motion, Carbone. Second, uh, Botkin. Is there any further discussion? Let's vote. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6-0 with uh, President Decker absent. And as a part of that, Allison McBride is here as the new AP at Massey Ranch. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, is there another motion? Yeah, I have one more motion this evening. Um, after, in the appeal review of expulsion order for making a terroristic threat, I move that we uphold the expulsion of the student who made a terroristic threat in the spring of 2018. Second. Motion, Carbone. Second, Botkin. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all, let's vote. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0, President Decker absent. All right, we will move on to the introductory remarks by uh, Trustee Murphy. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Can you stay standing just for one moment as we pray? Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you tonight for keeping everyone safe, having everyone having a good summer. Uh, we ask that you bless our staff, bless, bless administration, um, and that all of our students have a good return uh, in a week to school. In your name we pray, amen. <coughs> right. Does that complete your remarks, sir? Yes. Um, there, it's no coincidence that there's um, no uh, recognition tonight. No one's here to hear me speak that they let me uh, have the mic. So. Um, <laughs> I find that a coincidental, but perfect. That, <laughs> perfect. I just like to. Good job, Jeff. Yeah, I know. But I, on a personal note, I would just like to say that I'm ex super excited um, for uh, another school year. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our administration, our staff that we um, have hired this year and that are returning. I look forward to a great 2019 as I have uh, one that's going to be a freshman this year. So time flies and, and enjoy it while it lasts. So and uh, let's just have another good year. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, as uh, Trustee Murphy mentioned, there is no board recognition. So uh, does anybody want to say anything under board member activities? We haven't done that in months. No. Nope. No. Nothing? OK. All right. <laughs> <laughs> item 10, we'll move to the uh, consent agenda, items 1 through 10. Uh, let me bring up one thing. Uh, there were some miscellaneous typos in the uh, minutes as I mentioned in the email earlier, uh, but those have been corrected, and uh, that's all squared away. So is there any other item that, or is there any item that anyone would like to pull from consent? President, can I make one note, please? Yes, sir. Um, under item uh, six of the uh, consent agenda, there's a typo there. It should say 2018-19 school year, but the mm -hmm. motion is correct, and, and inside the agenda is correct. It's okay. correct on that page. All right. Is there anything else that was well, there anything anybody wants to pull off of the consent agenda? Yeah. With the, with the exception of uh, the the error Dr. Kelly pointed out, I'd like to move that we uh, approve the consent agenda as a president. Second. Second. All right. Is that good enough to get us where we need to be? I think uh, we maybe need. The way Jeff worded it, he would want to make a second motion to approve that afterwards. Well, either way. Approving the consent agenda. You want to approve the consent agenda, agenda with that? Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, approve the consent agenda with changes. Okay. Second. Motion, Barry. Uh, second. Was that Mr. Floyd? Bakken. Okay. All right. Properly moved and seconded. And is there any further discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6 0. President Decker uh, absent. Uh, on to the regular agenda. Item one. Consider to approve TASB resolution for alternative graduation requirements. 
Yes, Mr. President, uh, members of the board. Um, the legislative, uh, the legislators in, I believe it was the last uh, legislative session, wanted to extend an opportunity for students who um, entered as freshmen way back in 2011 to have some of the same advantages for graduating as the most recent laws in which, uh, with recent law, if you have failed up to two star tests, you can have a graduation committee meet and um, give you alternative assignments or do other things to demonstrate proficiency. So what uh, TASB has recommended, and we've included it in here, is the language uh, for doing so. And you'll find that it is even a little bit more lenient than the current system in that it doesn't require that you pass the star end of course, but that you um, perform well on one of these indicators, that one or more of these indicators, and, and that is determined by the graduation committee as it is for the current students. So I, I, we recommend passage um, of it. Uh, someone asked me today uh, how many students we, we uh, Nyla has told me we haven't heard any students yet, but she told me that down in Alvin ISD they already passed this resolution and have had 100 students who um, have uh, come forward to ask about this. So, so if we uh, anticipate some. Um, I apologize for interrupting. Um, do we have an idea of the number of students that were a freshman in 11 and 12 that have not graduated oh, Good yet? question. I don't. don't anticipate having too many because we recapture a lot in the summer. We have summer school programs and uh, some intervention programs, so we don't have a whole lot. But we will advertise and see who we can find, and we'll go back and look at kids that attempted to test that never passed and try to contact them and okay, so see who we can get to come in. You're saying there may be some that have dropped out mm -hmm. with dropout rates. That met graduation requirements but did not pass the tax okay. or TOS even. I see. Okay. Yeah, because you're going to be talking about some older, correct? Well, they're, they're older now, so they're 18 to 20, right? So we're talking students that have been in the workforce probably five to eight years, maybe, mm -hmm. and that just did not pass the test that make, met graduation requirements. Other than that, okay. Wow. Okay. Anything further? I move that the Mr. board. Carbon, did you get your answer? Sorry. Yeah, your I, I guess I just envisioned it as I read through this that Sorry, these are students that are older walking through our hallways that no. we're currently seeing that. But the way you're explaining it is that these are students that otherwise walked to graduation but didn't pass the correct the test at the end of the year. We will come up with something they will not be in our classrooms. We will find an alternative program for them, evaluate their transcripts, evaluate the other indicators, and see what we can come up with see what work or military experience they may have had that's applicable. And students that fall into similar categories now are often service through our PACE Center? They're service through PACE and they're service through graduation programs where they're, all, they're allowed an alternative, a okay. graduation committee. Okay. Thank you. And will these students come back to the board or to the superintendent or is it all the under the purview of the committee? It will be under the committee, and right. uh, my thought is that hopefully we'll be able to recapture some, and we'll have right. a graduation here, okay. and be able to okay. recapture some older students yeah. that we may have missed somewhere. Okay. Yeah. They okay. may be at a different place in life, or that uh, we can service in a different way. Okay. Mrs. Carbone, you, you good? I'm good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'll move that the board approve the TASB recommended resolution for alternative graduation requirements as presented. Second. Okay. Motion Floyd, second Bakken. Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. All in favor, please say aye. Excuse me, <laughs> raise your right hand. All right, all opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6 0. President Decker absent. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, item two on the regular, excuse me, on yes, the uh, um, business. Yes, Mr. Sir. President, uh, consider endorsement of candidate for the Texas Association of School Boards. That was Mr. Botkin. Sorry about that. Yes, ma'am. Um, vacancy on the TASB Board of Directors. Um, Charles knows a little bit more about this than I do, he, having talked to Rebecca. Right. Um, I just asked her if she had a recommendation on this gentleman or if she had any background information she wanted to share with the board. And she mentioned that uh, this was included just because this gentleman uh, emailed the board, I think, on several occasions. And so it wasn't a recommendation to endorse him. Okay. So it's just for 
It's just for discussion purposes. The board does not have to take any action. Yeah. So. I mean, historically, we don't do this. Yeah, I, right. I that, don't that's right. remember us endorsing no. someone before. Yeah. So can someone um, help me understand how this works? How does someone get elected? From what I understand, local boards in regions elect a member of our local area to the TASB board as our representative. Correct? Crystal, I think the way it works is that there are nominations and then TASB somehow internally picks from among those nominees. I don't think you as a board or other boards will vote on this. You just nominate. Correct. And then I think TASB uh, looks at the pool and picks somebody. Oh, that's not very representative. <laughs> Um, okay. So does does anyone want to actually mm. vote that, we, excuse me, move that we uh, endorse the uh, gentleman that's presented, or do we want to just pass with no action? I don't know who he is. Well, yeah, I feel uncomfortable. Okay. Good. Okay. okay, all right. The board will take no action on item two. Item three. Uh, yes, Mr. Yes, President, sir. members of the board, um, th again, uh, this is We've talked about this uh, several times in the past. Uh, we are continuing to recommend uh, 12 additional personnel. They are going to be called security monitors. They'll be um, stationed at the high school. We are saying that they are more effective to have hire our own people than a contract with a security company. We, they will be under the direct uh, uh, supervision of the principal of each campus. We will be paying more than they would have received under a security contract so we think we can get better quality and more stability with this. We also think that there's probably, I don't know how much of this has already happened, David, but there's internal candidates that probably want to be considered for this. Seven of the 12 are okay. So um, this costs the same amount as, um, almost identical amount as we were paying for the security contract uh, of last year. So we, we recommend uh, the hiring of this. We think that makes our high schools more secure. The 12th position will go right away to Shady Crest Elementary because they don't yet have a security vestibule in place. But after that is in place, that person would become what we call a floater, used where we need them. And um, I asked you earlier about the training and the response yes. that you gave indicated that these security monitors are going to be more fully trained than the people that we had Absolutely. in the past. So they'll be better equipped to actually provide the support needed at those um, campuses than the previous security yes, company. Uh, okay. What I wrote down here was uh, student de-escalation training from the special ed folks, uh, level two security guard training. Uh, Sergeant Beavers will also be training them on job responsibilities. And of course, the principal has some flexibility about how to use them and will be doing their own internal training with the person. Okay, Dr. Kelly, I know we had a, a request for qualifications or proposals from um, four security companies out. Are we still going to engage any companies to provide um, Where did we leave that, George Annie? Dr. Kelly, I have a question. Um, in the write-up, it, it states that you would like the flexibility in using 300,000 previously budgeted, but the actual budget is 292, 284. So are you requesting the full 300, or are you requesting the 292, 284? Um, well, really, just at this point, uh, Sean, the, the um, just permission to hire those 12 folks. What David has done uh, at your at y'all's request is started costing that out according to the midpoint of their salary schedule. So uh, it's still an estimation at this point. Um. Uh -huh. uh, so I won't. Mr. would you mind repeating that in the, in the microphone? Thank you. I Kim was saying we couldn't hear you, sorry. Carter was trying to make sure that you understood that it's not additional funds. This is funds that we had appropriated right. for our security. Yep. We're just repurposing the funds. 
the 292 quote uh, is midpoint. There, I think there's 12 of them we uh, anticipated we put into the budget impact that they would t all take insurance. We have about 60% of our employees that take insurance, so you're going to see probably 2,600, I mean, 2,600, uh, uh, 2,600 a pop uh, come off that total that total number. Okay, so this is a midpoint, not a starting it's point. It's a midpoint. Like the, okay. If we find that there's additional dollars in this budget to hire those additional, would we consider increasing that number to a yes, greater uh, number? Yes, Georgiani was just basically reminding me of where we left it, which is, you know, if it's under seventy-five thousand dollars and it, we have the money in the budget, then I'm empowered to hire as we need to. And she has received a number of proposals, and so we'll kind of see how it goes, see what we need to do. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to the board of trustees approve the recommendation of the additional personnel for the 2018-2019 school year and subsequent years for uh, security. Monitors. Second. Right. Motion back in second <coughs> Floyd. Is there any further discussion? Well, yes, sir. I have one question. So, if, if I recall, the last the last uh, contract we had with a security guard or a security company, the pay range was between ten and twelve thousand dollars, right? I mean, mm -hmm. ten and twelve dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. And if I calculate this correctly, this it's actually a little bit less. I don't think so. I'm doing it on a full, a full year. I don't know what y'all calculated it on, right? So Probably school year. You did it on? 179 days versus 179 days. 360 yeah. days. Yeah. Yep. So it is close. more. Most of that's going to come out in the number of days. Yes. Yeah. We reduced <coughs> significantly the number of days our original <coughs> security guards were working to okay. the number of days that were most applicable to students being on campus. Okay. So a lot of that came out. We actually purposely have um, made some adjustments to how we are quoting the salaries so that it is higher than the original rate they were being paid to the other company. Good. That's good. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. Anything further? No. All right. There is a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6-0. President Decker is absent. On to item four. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. President, members of the board, um, this is something that has come up uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I give Jeff Berry a lot of credit, not, not within the last two weeks, but if you remember when we went down and talked to Senator Taylor at the, at, in Austin, uh, Jeff was asking me, him about this idea of allowing more legislative flexibility between M&O and INS, uh, particularly if the tax rate stayed the same. And that's kind of state of my mind uh, all this time, is there a way for us to do this? Well, a way opened up for us in the last couple of weeks. Um, INS debt can be paid either by taxing uh, citizens in the INS portion of the rate, or in a very limited fashion, you can use bond money, money that has been uh, saved from a bond project, and you can put that in the fund to pay your debt tax. Or you can, you can also place the interest that you've earned on bond proceeds. And we've had a lot of interest earned from November, well, the bond election was in November 2016. Um, follow me on this, and I, ho I hope I'm not getting too bogged down in detail. Each penny of INS uh, brings in $750,000. And so two pennies is $1.5 million. So if we were to uh, lower the INS rate by two pennies so that we could raise the M&O rate by two pennies and leave the rate the same, we need to have $1.5 million available to us to pay those two cents of INS debt. And what Georgiani has found for us is that we have almost a million dollars, as you saw earlier in your agenda, uh, left over from the Carlston Pearland High School Lahan bond project. That's a bond project that actually was approved by the voters way back in 2006. So there's almost a million dollars there. Plus, 
uh, we've earned about $500,000 in bond interest that we have. Those two things can be placed in the INS debt fund and used to pay bonded debt. You cannot just budget money and put it in there from other sources. So this is an opportunity that's available to us where we go down two cents in INS and up two cents in m and without changing the rate. The advantage to us is this. The m and pennies bring in a lot more revenue than INS pennies because you get state funding with those. The state rewards you for a higher tax effort in the m and side it does not reward you for a higher tax effort on the INS portion of your debt. The advantage for us is that we would actually, uh, uh, Georgiani calculates, we will bring in $5.5 million by doing this switch. And that, in turn, reduces the, the, the I don't want to, I'm not sure if the right word is deficit, but the hit to the fund balance that we were uh, projecting when we approve the budget in June. Um, now, why can we do this um, without a, an election? We can do this without an election because in the aftermath of a federal disaster, we may raise for one year the m and rate to help with the, uh, just the overall problem with uh, funding after a federal disaster area. So what I asked uh, Georgiani to, to calculate, and you saw this in the email I sent, is that we've had all, all of a sudden enrollment became completely flat. And we are still dealing with that, as, as I've told you, as we go into this year. Plus, and I, I should have spelled this out more in, in, the, in the email to you, our tax base over the last three years has grown by an average of 7.5%. This year, because of the hurricane, our, uh, our, uh, our tax base grew by only 3.09%. So that's a, that's a significant loss of revenue. I don't have that number right in front of me. So anyway, those are two examples where We've lost millions in student enrollment that would have been state funds and in the tax base not growing at the rate it had been growing before Hurricane Harvey. Um, so now, we, uh, George Annie helped me and, and did an initial uh, talk to our bond, uh, our bond advisors, and they, I guess, in turn with their attorney. And all of this looks good. I, because I only came up with this about a week and a half ago, I'm not a recommending any action tonight, but I'm wanting to see if you guys are interested in this, and then I would bring it back to you in September. And the reason that it's on the agenda for this item is that originally I had w was recommending just returning these uh, leftover bond funds to the general fund. I am now saying to you instead, let's wait on that decision until September, and if all of this pans out, then let's use that money by putting it into uh, the INS debt fund and, um, and, and doing this thing with the rate. Another thing we found out, it's, uh, it's somewhat related, unrelated, um, when, we pa when we had you all pass the tax rate in June, we did not know that there's a technicality that you have to wait until you get the actual appraised values to set your tax rate. You can't set it on the estimate that we received in May. And so we were going to come back to you anyway in September and set the rate again. So our, if all this works out, we would come back to you in September and recommend that you set the same overall tax rate, but you do the switch, the two pennies m and two pennies INS. So I'll just leave it there and then just open it up for questions. Are there any notable disadvantages to doing it? So far, I cannot think of any disadvantages. Because they're not, there's no tax increase. Right. There's no, it's not costing anyone anything. In it's fact, not using this money. No. In fact, I'll go even further. To the taxpayer, there's this advantage. We don't have as deep a hole from the lower enrollment to fill next year because we have been able to partially fill it from state coffers this year. 
But this is a one. This time, is a one year one thing. Yes. Thing. Next year, and w- this is this is such a great year for us to do this because the legislature meets in January. They'll come up with school funding decisions by May. At that point, we would then know whether this, um, whether we want to do a TRE, whether we want to uh, employ major cuts to our program, or what other solution we might have to fund the 2019-20 school year. Because right now, you know, that doesn't look real positive for us. And it might require a TRE election in the fall. By the way, you saw my email to you all about the legislature. There's somebody that wants to push forcing the TRE elections onto the November uh, general election, which buries it among many other elections, which I hope doesn't pass. But anyway, that's a little off subject. Um, I guess I'm I'm not in favor of this, um, and I'll give a few reasons why. And Georgina, you can help me understand maybe a little bit more about the INS piece because after researching this a little bit more, my understanding is that if we take those two pennies, if we pay down INS now, it, we're kind of arbitrarily decreasing that rate, and next year it's going to be, we're going to have to increase it more than what we are staying at now based on that decrease this year. Is that correct? We would increase it exactly the same as we were planning to increase it uh, for next year. Right. So INS is what INS is. So Well, it depends. It depends on several factors, such as what the property values are going to be next year. Mm-hmm. If they do jump greatly, you know, we, we can only tax uh, what we need to serve as a debt for that next year. Right. So by the nature of the virtue of the bonds and that we're selling and the kind of growth pattern that we're in, for just building out buildings and those kinds of things, by the very virtue of where we're at, we're going to have more debt because of the bonds that we're selling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that INS piece. So so we originally, when, when the bonds passed, mm-hmm. the original intent was that we were going to go up to seven cents on INS. That's what the uh, community approved. Uh, because of the way everything has been playing out, that rate as of right now, has been reduced to about a total of five cents. Mm-hmm. So we're already in the positive side mm-hmm. um, with that. So doing this again, it brings us $4 million mm-hmm. more from the state. It puts a $1.5 million that would go to INS into the local funds. Right. We don't dip as much as we are supposed to be dipping by the end of this year. Um, and then next next year it all starts the same way it was we're at, we're at back at 104 mno and then the ins rate will be determined based on what the property values are at that time and what our debt service requirements will be for the next year so it could be that um if it was let's say i think it's um, like one point. as it is right now it's 0.3756 on the ins side it'll go back to 0.3756 plus whatever was needed Right. to meet so those requirements. So somewhere around 0.38. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we were already planning on making an increase because oh, of the yes. sale of the bonds, yeah. right? Because yeah. there what is going to be... What was that increase going to be? Was it two... What, about two three, cents. About two cents. It, okay. it was originally going to be four cents right, for, for next tranche. year. Okay. Two and cents. we were able to lower that to two cents okay. for next year. So I understand uh, I might be in the minority here, but if I can kind of complete my thoughts, yes, maybe it'll please. give you a fuller picture of where I'm coming from. Um, from a conservative standpoint... In my mind, number one, when we went to issue bonds, we issued bonds to citizens based on a list of these are the things that we're going to do for these this bond election. Um, so the first place that I feel uncomfortable is going and using the funds differently than what we told voters we were going to use them for by moving them into the general fund. Oh, no, 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 no. <coughs> it's, I think that we need to clarify that. Uh, this is another bond. This is the 2006 Six bond. bonds. Right. We had three projects left over. Okay. Now, the bond issuance was not enough to cover the expenses for this three bond project. So what we did is that the board last year in June transferred $2 million to cover on top of a sale of property as well. So there was a total of about uh, $5.5 million that was transferred technically from gen- the general fund to uh, to the debt service to cover these expenditures. After all is said and done, we complete the projects, we came under by about 
900 and some plus the interest that has been accrued, so about $1 million. So it's so $1 million I'm dollars that we could so send. So what I'm for hearing from you is that we Kate took this money from a general fund already mm -hmm. to pay for the, That's correct. The, yes. in the money that we did That's not correct. meet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that helps. So technically, it's We're almost like general back. fund it would it's be held in the loan that we gave to we basically, instead of sending it back to the general fund, we send it to the INS, and mm -hmm. we're able to do this and get four more million dollars from the state. Okay. And just in one quarter, if you looked at your quarterly investment report, you see that in just in the capital projects funds, we earned last quarter about close to five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in interest, mm -hmm. which had we not diversified. And then all the things that we did, all the work that we did back in November, December, we would not have gotten as much interest as we have gotten now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. one one thing to add, uh, when when in back in 2006 or whatever year we sold those bonds, we were already paying a yield on those bonds anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's money we had already realized into our coffers, and we had to do something with it. We can't give it back to the bond company mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. But so it but goes into our general fund. we can pay down bond debt with that. Right, and that's what, that's what if it but goes into the INS fund, that's what we're theoretically doing. We're, we're taking that money that originally was debt, we're re, revitalizing that money to pay down debt, per se, in the INS side. But then the two, the two pennies on INS are floating over to M&O at a cost of $1.5 million, but we have two cents coming back plus two cents from the state. So we get four cents, about five and a half million dollars total. Mm -hmm. You know, right. just by doing that, keeping the keeping the net of the interest rates the same, the taxpayers don't necessarily know. Well, Normally we'd have to go know, out for a bond election. That's my problem. I, I mean, mean, but if they knew they would go completely for it, what because that? That they would go completely for it. I can't understand, Crystal, how anybody could object to this. Yeah. Um, uh, let me use the one argument I hadn't thought of that you oh. used, which is, the voters approved the bonds in 2006 for this purpose, and now we're using it for that purpose. Conceivably, even under this plan, we could say, since there's $1 million that was left over, okay, of the, f of the uh, $5.5 million that we're going to get, let's dedicate $1 million to remaining facility projects that might come up. That way, there's no way that anybody can yeah, claim. I like that idea. Yeah, but Dr. Very Kelly, much. Yeah. we had let's to put the Let's use that money directly right but back no. to the like right back to the list without having to sell any remaining bonds right. so that we're not accruing more interest. Right. Right. So in my mind, the best, the end of the line is, and I get that we wouldn't get the extra 5.5, but at the same time, I believe in voter, I mean, voter participation in these you kinds know, of I, decisions. I meant to get the 5.5, but in order to honor your idea that all of the original, what was it, 35 million on that first bond yeah. was used directly for facilities, we could take one million of that five and a half million dollars we get from the state and spend it on facility projects. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Just cover the cost. Right. Cover the, yeah. But, but so I, I mean, there's, I can't really think of any way that the taxpayer does not benefit from this. This is like a miracle. Well, it, here, here's it's a the miracle this year, but it's kind of an arbitrary decrease because n the next year you're going to have no, the no, increase no, in no, INS no. and we're going to go out for TRE. Well, but, but not really. I mean, Crystal, if we did nothing, the, uh, the, the rate stays the same and next year the rate will go up for whatever pennies we need for the bond. That's true either way, whether we do this Agreed. or we don't do this. Right. And we'll have so a bigger hit to our reserves. What's that? If we don't do this, the reserve fund will get hit more. It hits by an $8 million. Significantly more. Yes, that's correct. But you're right. This is like a one-year thing. Mm -hmm. I think next year we're still projecting to be hit. So next year we start back where we were at this yeah. last budget year, right. but without so having right. dipped as much right. into the fund balance. So we start with a healthier fund balance to make this decision. Plus, like Dr. Kelly said, the legislature is meeting. We'll know what type of funding is out there, and we'll be able to be making you know, a also, better decision. Crystal, I do worry that the state will view this Thing. Many districts are doing this, by the way, right now. As I, I, I didn't even come up with this until a week and a half ago, and now Georgiani tells me Spring ISD, Conroe, uh, Conroe and um, several others Klein, are doing the same um, two-penny thing. But the legislature may say, we're going to close that loophole because they're having to give out more money from M&O because of people doing this tax swap. 
but at least right now it's legal and allowed. I have a do you think if we wait another month that it we're going to lose out? No, no, I think that the only January. time that the state can uh, act on this would be next legislative session, January through May. Um, no. And I, I don't want to get your hopes up too high because it's almost one of these, it's too good to be true, so i got to find out and make sure that there's not something we've overlooked. But so far, everything we've heard right. makes now, this possible. There's one thing that we ha have to do, which is publish another notice of tax rate. And so there has to be enough time to publish that notice, so we'll have to make a decision fairly quick. Yeah, I forget. How many days in advance of the meeting does that have to? Um, it's a couple of weeks. Okay. I can't remember exactly. So tonight, if you're interested in that idea, we would mm -hmm. propose that different rate next time uh, in the paper. We would put that pa in the paper, and then we'd see what you all wanted to do in September. And yeah. we can still advertise it at that with that swap, we'll and then you still get to decide in September whether to go for it or not. Tonight all we're, uh, Lance asked me what he needs from us tonight. Tonight all I need is let's delay this item in the agenda until next month so that you've had a chance to consider this idea. We'll work on it more and bring it back to you in September. Wait, so then you could go out and advertise yeah. for October? No, no. Or it September. has to be approved before September 30th by law. So are we giving you the discretion to go ahead and go now? Well, uh, I would say we can advertise it, and that way we meet that requirement, but you still get to decide right. whether you want to approve it or not. Okay. And that would be well under $75,000, I assume. Uh, what would um, be You wouldn't need our approval to advertise? Oh, no, 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 right. no, we're good there. I do have to think about that legal question because we, we would be raising M and O and lowering INS. And so when you when you advertise that you can't set a rate higher right. than what you advertise. So we could technically set we could technically advertise both the M and O at the one oh six and not reduce the INS even though we would be reducing the INS through the vote. Okay, we'll, have, we'll work that, that through yes. with our lawyers. You don't need that recommendation right there. No, I'm just saying let's delay this item which is um, why are we delaying anything? Because we're not sure where we want, where you want to put that money that is left over from the 2006 bond. It, it says here there's $936,000 left, and we were originally saying put it in the general fund. Now we're saying give us some time. There may be a better use for that fund. We may want to put it into the INS account okay. in September. Well, so that's originally INS money that we're able to put into the general fund, which is an amazing thing, right? So the way that our, our funding structure is built, it generally precludes us from doing that. And just imagine if we were able to set our tax rate, a singular rate, and be able to keep that rate the same, regardless of whether or not our, 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 uh, our debt incre uh, decreases, to pay off our debt a lot faster, that gives us a huge, a powerful position with our budget. But right now, the way it is, we're, we're handcuffed. And by doing this, that allows us this one time to be able to take that money and put it into our operating fund as a Band-Aid. And it's all because of Harvey, and that's it. So I'm for it, um, even though it's going to look like we're increasing taxes, but we aren't uh, when we when we make the announcement. I'm curious to know why, we, because of what Crystal said about the you're no, I, I understand. I mean, but no, no, just that we're not ready to proceed further than to just find out tonight is the board inclined for us to do this, and we we would have more steps to do. The the reason this is on the agenda tonight is that before we figured this out, we would have just taken this extra money, put it in the general fund. That was the original motion that uh, was intended for Left this item. Left this in here. Yeah, for discussion. Okay. Yeah. So that we could bring this up and and uh, talk so about. So you're not you're no longer recommending we until you find out that we move this to general fund until next month. Yes. So we're going to take no action. Is That's correct. Right? Yes, sir. So that yeah. won't delay us on anything, right? We hope not. We're going to look at we're it gonna, and make yeah. sure. We'll get back to you. At the worst, we'd have to have a special meeting in order to advance it a step further before right. we posted. I have a question about those original funds. Dr. Kelly, you said there's a couple things that we can do to put in the INS. We can put bond interest right. 
bond interest. Bond interest. And then uh, dollars sold bond, for bonds. Yeah, leftover. And and uh, what Georgiani has pointed out to me, I didn't quite understand this myself, is that you cannot uh, budget for yeah. excess INS funds. Right, right. But those funds, we were, obviously, we sold the 30 plus million dollars in in bonds, we were short, so we had to bring in about five from reserves, right? right? So here's my question. How do we know whether or not those dollars we got left over are from the bond proceeds or are they from the general fund? No, because uh, you know you would spend your capital projects funds first. First, The okay. only reason why we transfer that amount was to cover whatever excess we bond. thought we were so, going to have in cost. So we, sold, we spent the bond dollars we sold 34.3 million. Right. We're starting to get it. Uh -huh. And then it. Um, we sold some land and we used the right. proceeds of that land, 2.6 million. Right. And then we transferred an additional two. So then the total cost of the project was 38.9, but uh, we had uh, expenditures were 38. So that difference, that 950 plus whatever interest has accrued, it could go back to the general fund because the general fund put it there, it out, yeah. but now but we're like, okay, how about we how are about able we to do ideas? this, yeah. and plus... But I, I, I just thought that we spent the bond dollars first, and we hit mm -hmm. the reserve dollars last, so yes. what we have are dollars that were in the general fund that are left over, so these are not... No, that, um, these back are not in 2017... Mm. We transferred it, right? Two year, million. Mm -hmm. On June of 2017, before that year closed, mm -hmm. the two million dollars were transferred mm -hmm. to, to INS. Compl to comp to IN to um, oh. the bond to the twin to the 2000. Yes. To yeah, the, the bond. But it was but um, project. Right. So when we transfer it to a bond account, mm -hmm. then it becomes bond proceeds. No, because no, pro that proceeds. was not a sale of bonds. Right. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Those dollars aren't bond proceeds. No, so they're not. That's correct. So, General but now they're money. but now they're but budgeted we, there. But they're budgeted there. But mm -hmm. so they're not. They weren't bond proceeds. So can we still move those yes. into INS? We can move yes. into INS mm -hmm. debt service. Okay. All right. I, I'm still confused why we're not, sir, approving it tonight. I'm sorry. Well, because it's not on the yeah. agenda, yeah. actually. Really. So oh, that's, that's a good point. Is, <laughs> it's not on his So okay, let me let me back up and let's, let's address <laughs> that. So, <laughs> uh, Dr. Kelly uh, routinely consults with whoever's leading the meeting about the agenda. So he and I talked about this, and so I said, "Hey, we can talk about it as long as it fits underneath this, right?" So what's happening is that he made a recommendation and said, "Okay, hold on, I got something better, but I want to talk to you about it tonight." So we cannot take action on this. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? So. Um, when we come back in September, we'll have a recommendation from the administration on p keeping the tax rate the same, just moving the pennies around, and then you, you see what the end, end effect is. But and if we need to have a, if you think it's not gonna fly in September, you said a, a possible emergency meeting, is that correct? Yeah, or if um, we find out that the posting requirements yeah, require exactly. that we set a particular rate no higher than, then we may have to have a special meeting, get you guys to agree to it or not, and then post that in that meeting, okay. and then uh, uh, approve the tax rate at that right. subsequent meeting before September 30th. Before September 30th. Okay. All right. Anything else? Nope. I wanted to say one other thing. Okay, you mentioned earlier about our tax rate. <laughs> You mentioned earlier about our tax rate that we set it too early. Is that, is that what yes. you meant? We, okay. We we found a technicality that um, apparently has been on the books and we did not realize it, which is that you may not, s even though you're fis in our case, our fiscal year begins July 1st, mm -hmm. we cannot set the tax rate based on the preliminary appraisal values that we received in May. We needed to wait until July 24th, which is, I think that's the date, that we right. get the uh, the final appraisal value. So we were intentional. We were already intending to come back to you and have you repeat the motion that you made in June. So do we have any private consultants or people that help us navigate through all of the tax law or about well, these kinds of things? What we normally use is our bond advisors, and um, they in turn have an attorney associated with their firm that helps us. And so I'll be looking over the next few days at who is the expert on this to make sure that we've run through all the traps. For example, the one that Charles just brought up about the movement of funds, making sure that all that's kosher. Okay, thank you. All right, 
if there is nothing else on that item, the uh, administration has guidance and the board will take no action on item four. Uh, next up would be the administrative reports. The quarterly investment report is in your packet for your review. With no further business to come before the board, we will adjourn at 7.16 p.m. Thank you all very much.